um, you can kind of like see how a seamount has subsided over millions of years, like where it originated, how it continued to go through the plate because just because a seamount has a particular location, like let's say to Hawaii, doesn't necessarily mean that it's a similar age or was brought along the same path. Because there are regional tectonics that happen that are gonna move things around as well. Yeah, so uh, we can tell the age of the seamount from some of our rock collections. Yeah, yeah, so if we collect a rock, we can definitely age it very easily. Um, we can characterize it geochemically, which gives us a lot of information about where it came in the mantle. Um, we can figure out how deep it came from, how deep it crystallized, um, which is really cool. There's a lot of uh, the temperature that it crystallized at, or it formed. Um, there's different geothermal barometers that can do this for us. So there is a lot of information we can get from collecting the rock, but knowing exactly where it was, I'm not sure. If we yeah, you'd have to that model out models yeah. based on plate tectonics and and where it is now versus where it could have been at the the age that that rock is. Exactly. I think it's really interesting how we found so many different ways to try to learn about the past through what we can find in the present. Oh, check this out. Well spotted. Yeah, these uh, little uh, white sea stars that we find really deep uh, haven't all been described. So I, I know that Chris Ma at the Smithsonian has been working on describing a number of uh, deep sea goniastid sea stars. And this might be one of the ones that might be zoom new, in, so definitely want to zoom in, check this out. Oh, yeah, it's cute. It's really cute. Want to sample it? Uh, yeah, let's sample this. Okay. Uh, suction definitely. Yeah, it won't fit in the suction, I don't think, but we can you suction them so? into into a box. Okay. Yeah, this is one of those depths that hasn't been explored that much, so there's a lot of new stuff down here. And uh, in our animal guide, this animal is described as Goniasterity, a uh, new genus. Uh, ship stopped, but Argus is going to come ahead of you. Yeah, roger. It might, well, might fit in the slurp. Let's find out. Uh, what am I doing? Yeah, Roger. I'm going to Argus for a bit. Hint, yeah, I re grab, which is not as easier said than done, but you kind of got to do a dynamic thing. So if you scoop underneath, you kind of knock it and then grab it. Sure, always yes, but you can't come through. Hi. In the front. 
See that dynamic kind of thing? See what I'm talking about there? Oh no. Can you zoom in please, video? Okay, go ahead. Give me 40%. Come wide, please. Forward box A and B are open. Roger. Oh, I want to do this one. Negative. Can I get super extra double wide, please, on video? Uh, let me get this up and above. And you can open the box now. Oh, he's hanging on for dear life. Okay, you can kill suction. Hello, let go. All right, you can close it up. Is that bio box B? That was the right, that was B, yep. Okay, that was sample 024. Okay, I'll make sure to pass that along to the navigators. Okay, I'll, I'll let them know. Sample 024, is that right? Data, was that correct? 024? Hello, back row. Yes, 024. Thank you. 024. All right. Uh, Good morning and welcome to our live chat if you are just joining us. My name is Lisa. I'm a science communication fellow on board the Nautilus for the first time ever. Enjoying my experience, every minute of it. I'm a teacher. I've been dividing my time between meeting up with my classrooms virtually and classrooms all over the world and helping out with the Science Party Line. So look forward to seeing your questions in the chat. We'll get to as many as we can. We still are going through a little bit of a shift change. We'll do introductions when that's convenient for everybody else. We had a question earlier. How long is today's dive going to last? And this is another 24 hour dive. We launched this morning at 4 a.m. our time. Test one, two. Can y'all hear me? Hey, this is Adam Sewell, uh, professor at University of Rhode Island. I'm the watch lead uh, for this, this watch. I'm wondering if we can get a zoom on that dark looking. Uh... Nope, not yet. Jess is just getting set up. I'm a. Geologist, I'm a, uh, with interest in submarine volcanism. 
and really excited to be exploring this unnamed seamount here in the Central Pacific between the Hawaiian chain, Molokai Fracture Zone, and Necker Ridge. This has never been visited before, and we're excited to see what we can find for about the geology, biology, and chemistry of this new environment. There's my sock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, video, and uh, put it on in there for you. I could go with the one flip-flop okay. we found yesterday. <laughs> that is not a flip-flop, guys. <laughs> Has a little associate on it. Yeah, look at that. Beautiful. Uh, that's it. So we are uh, deeper than 3,000, so if we wanted to suck this thought guy thought about in. that. Uh, I think that... I don't know. I hesitate to get the only black one we've ever seen. Ooh. Okay. That's fine. I mean, I'm... I'll just get lots of screen grabs. Okay. Do you want me to brighten it a bit so you can try to see the color? That'd yeah, be great. that'd be awesome. Okay, so it's going to blow out the sand, but... Ooh, very nice. So it is blown out, I know, but... <laughs> Aaron, welcome to the watch. Oh, thank you. Hello. All right, there you go. If you guys want, I can center it up if you want some nicer screen grabs. Yeah, could you center it? Yeah. Well, thank you. Sorry for your eyeballs here, guys. We can even get closer. I think I still have more zoom left. Oh, that's it. That's all I've got. So while we're looking at this guy, should we talk through what we're going to do? Yeah. Adam, I got high pack up here. I can zoom out. Perfect. Um, waypoint 2 is ahead of us up slope. It looks like we're not too bad as far as slope goes right now, but um, I think it will be pretty steep as we get head up this, so we'll just be uh, cautious about that. So maybe while we're here in this field of like sediment and micronodules, Jess, if you would be so kind as to poke a little bit, see how much sediment's here? Sure thing, yeah. You can poke around and then if you're thinking about a core, we've had some bad experiences with cores in this type of environment, <laughs> but we can give it a go. <laughs> Thank you. I'd also be interested, even if it's not that deep, to do kind of an angled core just to get some stuff, but I'm not sure that it would survive with these little nodules kind of pushing down on everything. Yeah, the nodules might be working against us, and if we don't get a good plug, like a, cement, like a sedimented clay plug, it will be um, a bit futile. But we can at least get some scoops if you want, or we don't have a scoop, but I can use the jaws to also scoop as well. Um, I'm going to move a little bit under Argus, and then we can set up to poke the ground, if that's okay with you. Perfect. You want a full wide? Yes, please, Erin. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Sarah, I have a quick question for you. Sure. How many rocks we got in us right now? We got any big ones? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Do we have any large rocks in our bins? No, you've got one no, small we have, rock. Yeah, one small one. Okay. Great.
like there's a little bit of something digging around in this sediment where you see those kind of bare patches. Yeah, it looks like his home is evidenced here, huh? On the lower left. All right, this is a nicer spot for us to sit down. For anyone who was in the wet lab processing samples yesterday, we had some questions about how the samples collected on the last dive fared and whether that pressure makes a difference, pressure change? Uh, yeah, we actually got some um, pretty pristine sea cucumbers, so we were excited about that. Um, all of them came Just up pushing. looking quite well. Great. Thanks. All right, Adam, moment of truth, eh? Mm -hmm. Oh, oh. <laughs> Actually, not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, What's the measurement on Herc's claws? Good question. Okay. <laughs> um, let's see here. I'd say at least 20 centimeters. Yeah. So maybe, it gets, maybe it gets us like 10 centimeters in. Let's Just give it a try. All right. All right. Oh, wide there, please, Dave. You know, one thing, one thing that's possible to do is to date, uh, any of the carbonate material at the base of a push core to, to understand how old the surface is that it's sitting on, although I think at this depth there might not be much preservation of carbon or calcium carbonate. I'm just washing my hands real quick. How do you date calcium carbonate? Uh, carbon dating. Carbon dating. Anything floating in that starboard bio bin there? Uh, we just have the C star and B. C star and B, Raj. That's in forward B, I think. Oh, sorry. Starboard, we got nothing floating. Nice. Okay, great. Unless they collected a second C star oh. behind the scenes. Okay, Jake. That is great right there. Thank you. Two for the win. So you really don't like these types of adapters. Yeah, those those core <laughs> tubes. Yeah, you should change them. Yeah. Seriously. We need hockey pucks. We need hockey pucks. Give us the pucks. I don't think, I don't know if Trevor likes them either. Uh, I think it's a consensus we don't like them. It's a preference, I feel like. Turn them sideways and drill the other way. Yeah. That'd be nice. <laughs> <laughs> a, a grabbable cylinder. <laughs> Seriously.
see. All right, go ahead and push that in there a bit there, Dave. Oh, oh, we'll get a good one. Yeah. Oh, man, Adam, I come. I'm nice. totally sorry. I doubted <laughs> you. No more doubting you anymore. Let that be the last time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, please come forward. There it is. <laughs> we will just omit those comments. <laughs> awesome. Let's hope that we can get it up and out. In time. Adam, one of our viewers asked, since the islands are pretty far away, where is this tan colored sand coming from considering the rocks are volcanic in origin? Yeah, the tan colored material is most likely kind of dead organic matter, uh, the shells of, of little critters floating in the water above. Um, it also can be some volcanic ash, uh, which when it's ground down to very fine grain looks tan as well. Cool. Can we do one more? Oh, yeah, sure. Okay. Let me just give this guy a little love tap here. Eventually. Okay. Sarah, can you confirm that was sample 025? Yes. Yeah, I see your screen. You're good. Thank you. <coughs> so there's a, a few reasons for those kind of watching at home, a few reasons for collecting this kind of core of sediment. Uh, one is to be able to look at the animals that uh, live in the in the sediment, the in fauna as they're called. Another is to understand what the composition of, of the sediment is, how much of it's organic matter versus uh, mineral. And in some cases, it it preserves a nice record of the history of the area. You know, like what was the what were the changing conditions above the seamount? Mm, uh, and on the seafloor, you know, as the sediment gets Thank laid you. down. There's a technical question from a viewer about the sampling. So assuming there's some carbonate down here, how would you go about dating anything uh, here, given that the base carbon and the water itself can be super old if the currents are part of the deep sea circulation channels? Yeah, so basically we would be dating the carbon in the shells of, of creatures. And just like all living things, they start at their kind of carbon clock starts when they die. So they have a, a certain ratio of carbon 13 to 14 that is mm -hmm. set uh, by the environment but it's push on in there, please, pretty consistent globally hey, Adam. and uh, yeah sorry um is this okay behind it is that all right for you uh i guess it would be good to be a little bit further away actually i can't tell quite where you are but uh it's so maybe over here is that okay yeah sure roger that okay sorry keep going going um right so 
in the anim in the animals that are living, they uh, kind of start their clock before or right as they die. And if this were truly sediment as old as as what we think the seamounts might be, then they would be carbon dead. Uh, you know, I think the kind of maximum age for carbon dating is probably. Anyone know that? It's like beyond 5,000 to 10,000 oh, years, right. it gets a little difficult. Thank you. Mm -mm. Ooh, this one wants to go out faster. Maybe not. Maybe it's Jake. Come on. Oh, that works. Nicely done, Jess. Yeah. Thanks, guys. That was Jess. Nice a question. A question one. for you. How much pressure does it take to push the tube into the ground like that? It really depends on the type of ground, hey. Um. So this one had some clay bits, so it's a little more resistance, but not that bad. And if we see that there's a lot of um. All right, Jake, all yours. If there's a lot of like rock underneath it, then you'll see the vehicle usually bounce back. And um, so we have visual indicators to see. It really depends though on how much pressure we put on, depending on the substrate. Well, this makes up for the 0 and 5 that we got for the really shallow stuff last time. <laughs> I was curious. <laughs> and in both cases those bottomed out is that correct or could you have gone further i think i could have gone further i, I didn't um want to push all the sediment out the top and mm -hmm. okay gung it up with those nodules you know because there's those uh, open ports on the top so maybe we can note that mm -hmm. it didn't bottom out no anymore. problem yeah cool and corrected. All right, so anything else you want over here or should we get on our way? I think we're ready to get on our way. Roger, did you want to zoom like a close up on the nodules before we go or? Maybe a tight shot on what on one of the holes. On one of the holes, Raj. Um, so I don't know, Adam, I don't know if you want to take a look at high pack. Go ahead um, push that in there, please, Dave. We're at kind of an angle to Waypoint two, we can we can truck along that way. We could also attack, uh, you know, more head on or lateral over, and then attach the slope, attack the slope more head on. Uh, I like fine with any direction. Option two, and then kind of going, getting up the hill a bit and going along contour towards waypoint three. Sure. There's a. It looks like there's a flatter bit up here too, so we can. We'll go from where we are, kind of more straight up slope towards mm -hmm. here yep and then we'll reassess and if we want to go along contour or just head straight up we can do that. perfect okay jess this is one that you did second um do 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 is this yes this is correct this is the second one okay uh, we'll try that as long as you're okay with skipping waypoint two All right, it's going to be 150. 150, Raj. 
All right, Dave, full light, please. Bridge now. Adam, we have some questions about the nodules. Could you talk about their formation and... Good morning. Uh, can we step 100 meters bearing 150, speed 0 0.2 knots? What we're interested in with regard to the nodules? Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Uh, the nodules are made up of mostly of manganese and iron. And it's manganese and iron that's dissolved in the seawater but precipitates out on hard surfaces. It happens really slowly, like uh, millimeters per millions of years. So when we see stuff that's centimeters thick, it's uh, millions and millions of years of accumulation of this material. One, the manganese uh, and iron ions that are that are precipitating are positively and negatively charged. And so while they're in the seawater, they're scavenging out um, some really rare metals that are not in very high concentrations. Stuff like cobalt and yttrium and, and things like that that get carried with the, the iron and manganese into the precipitate. And it in over these long time scales, it accumulates or uh, concentrates these rare metals. Uh, people have have an interest in these uh, uh, kind of rare metals for kind of commercial uses. You know, they're used in in creating uh, batteries, which are important for wind turbines and electric cars and, and all the computers we use. And and uh, as we transition, you know, perhaps from a fossil fuel based to a kind of renewable based uh, energy future. We're going to need these mineral resources. So what we're doing is is we're out here, you know, from a scientific perspective, trying to understand where they are, how they form, what the the uh, kind of animal communities or ecosystems are that live on them, so that we can make so we can provide that to policymakers to make informed decisions about if they are to be extracted. How do we do that in a responsible and sustainable? So we see them in, you know, in the view that we're looking at now, we're looking at tiny nodules, as we call them. And that's just the form, not the material. Um, kind of basically little balls of this stuff that have accreted on grains of sand or shells. Eventually, this will likely kind of uh, crust over entirely to a, a pavement. Um, but that will be, you know, in millions and millions of years. Uh, but we also see it all over the seamount on the, the volcanic rocks that make up the seamount, that they, they kind of coat those as well. So in that case, they're called a crust. And other cases, they're called nodules, but it's the same material in, in either case. One of our viewers asked if the nodules can form from inputs from the sediment themselves or diffusion through the sediments. Uh, sorry, could you repeat that? Um, wanted to know if the nodules could form from input from the sediments themselves or diffusion through the sediments. It's actually a precipitation. Ooh, what's that little critter? What a fish. Uh, precipitation from the water column. So it, they're basically the sediments, they're forming on top of the sediments, and uh, not necessarily from fluids diffusing through. But they can form diagenetically and push through there, Dave. fluids in the sediment, correct? Um, yeah, I don't think that's the dominant mechanism, but, you know, they, I guess what's really interesting to me is why they stay at the surface. You know, they're kind of heavier and denser than the stuff around them, but they're, yeah, there's Any more zoom on you there? Ooh. What interesting. Is, what's this one? That oh. face. Bathysaurus. Oh. According to Steve. Oh, you could claim that one. Well, you know. <laughs> honesty is the best policy. Hmm. The face is quite interesting on this guy. 
I do one more bump up. Sorry for your eyes. You want to go ahead and push on in tight. That's it. Full zoom. Oh, Raj, Raj. Yeah, it don't, don't look like the eyes are of much use. Well, it's very interesting. Oh. Got that one? Did yeah. I think we're sure good. Did. All right, full wide, please. Very surprised you let us sit down here for so long. We had a question about where the eDNA samples get processed from the dives. Uh, they preliminarily get processed in the lab. Uh, we filter the water through really fine filters um, and then preserve them in a liquid that's provided to us. Um, and then they get shipped off to the lab for further processing. viewer wants to know if there are any aquariums that have the environmental conditions that could keep these deep sea creatures alive on the surface. I don't think there are any aquariums, but uh, in the research community, people build <coughs> pressure vessels that uh, the organisms get put in at depth and then uh, maintain that pressure to the surface and then can keep them at the environmental conditions in a, in a lab for you know some period of time but it's super specialized equipment and the space you know the volume of material that you can keep at that pressure is not that that large uh, but a couple colleagues uh, Pete Gerges and Roxanne Beinert uh, I know have this that type of equipment. Is that a cucumber? Yeah, we want to look at this guy. Yeah. We're not called Cucumber Watch for nothing. Yeah, that's right. We're back. All right there, Dave. Looks like he's been there a while. Looks like a sweet potato. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or like a Sour Patch Kid or something. Yeah, I was thinking jelly bean. Oh, <laughs> yeah. He looked a little jelly belly. Sorry for your Maybe eyes. Maybe an aged jelly bean. <laughs> Actually, it looks a lot like a tongue. What a weird texture. Yeah. So much sediment on it. It's like it's sitting there a long time. So probably not alive. I don't know. I no, it, it looks alive. Hmm. Well, we could try slurping Let's if it spits. It yeah. It might be kind of big, guys. We can try just grabbing it and throwing it in a bin. Oh, okay. Where's the lasers? Yeah. You think it's too too chubby? Too chubby? I think it might not. Yeah, I think that'll clog our tube. Okay. We gotta we gotta do it quick though if we're gonna. Yeah, full wide, please. Oh, oh, uh, never mind. Steve says not the right kind. Liz is looking for. I think she's mostly looking for sea pigs with the walking legs. Okay. Oh, okay. Good. Looking for walking pigs, Raj. Gonna have the texture of a tunicate or a, a pyrosome, rather. Mm. Yeah. Oh yeah, sea pickle. Sea pickles and sea pigs. Six 
Greetings to our viewers watching from all over the world. We love to see where you're from. One of our viewers wants to know if we will find crabs at this depth. Sure, I think it's possible. We saw uh, a bunch of squat lobsters yesterday, and I think crabs could happily live at this depth, depending on whether there's enough food for them to eat. Okay. Is this a good time to go around and do some introductions? Sure. Sure thing. Did we already get the back row? No, we haven't finished. Well, I haven't finished. <laughs> uh, Sarah Bremer, uh, also a geologist, but not a volcanologist. Um, and I'm sitting in the data logger chair. Renato Kane, uh, navigation and mapping. I'm not a geologist nor a biologist. <laughs> <laughs> what about a volcanologist? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> a coral enthusiast, for sure. Coral enthusiast, and my background is in geospatial sciences. My name's Jess Sandoval. I'm Lion Herc. And backgrounds are in engineering. And Engine. reversible marine adhesives. And reversible marine adhesives. Bioinspired adhesives. Yes. Any type of cool adhesive. You want to talk about it? Apparently, not chemically binding <laughs> adhesives, so let's just not talk about that, though. <laughs> when, when you and the chemically binding adhesive scientists meet at the conference, that would be really awkward. <laughs> yeah, there's not a lot of words spoken. Not a lot of words, no. <laughs> there's nothing that brings you together, I guess you could say. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, there's no that bonding was. experience for us. <laughs> 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 Oh boy. As long as we don't <laughs> delaminate in front of individuals. Mm. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> that, they know, like fighting, delaminating. I don't know. Yeah. It could be also interpreted other ways. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Go, Jake. <laughs> it's a slippery slope. Nice. <laughs> Careful, this whole thing's being taped. <laughs> oh. 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 Oh, all right, I'm just going to end this right now. My name is Jake Bonney. Uh, <laughs> I am in the Argus chair, and uh, I am also I also have an engineering background. Uh, I studied ocean engineering at the University of Rhode Island, uh, and uh, I'm also from there. Now we can do some puns off of ocean engineering. Anyone? Anyone? <laughs> 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 Fuzzy. Dave Robertson, uh, lead video engineer for this expedition, uh, sitting in the video seat uh, operating cameras and uh, sending feeds out to the world. Uh, not an ologist of any kind, and uh, 40 years in the broadcast industry. <laughs> hey Dave, you want to push in on center screen there? I can't tell if that's a holotherian or if it's just a pile of... Seems like the, the guts of one. Oh. The that is... One. Oh. Definitely. Wow. Why is there wow. What is that? Ooh. That is a, it's on a hit list here. Hold on. Uh -huh. It's on a hit list? It is, yeah. It is. Wow, oh. we'll have to do this one quick. That one's got Very. some really long legs or whatever you call those. Yeah, that's weird. Take a look a bit better. I think that's a uh, peniogeny. Ania Joan? I don't know. What fit in the slurp? Uh, 
All right, we can try it. It'll, it looks like it's all compressed. Yeah, Jake, you want to the get the arm end. out there? Yep. Go ahead and push on in a bit more on its rolls. Rolling, rolling. Yeah, that should fit. I think it'll be very gelatinous. I think the slope's pretty benign, so we'll be all right for now. All right, roger that. But we will have to be a bit swift about it. All right. Ship has a couple meters left in its move, but it's not going to matter if I stop it, really. Roger that. Pull right there, please, Dave. I'll get you a little closer there, Jake, while you get the arm out. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just trying out. <laughs> I'm trying out different stuff here. Right in that area. <laughs> Fancy. Oh, I see, I see. watchley has got to use his new toys, eh? <laughs> Slurp jar one is full, but all the rest are open. Oh, gee. Roger that. Adam broke the I illustrator. Broke illustrator. How oh, dare you? <laughs> uh, we cannot have nice things. Oh, oh it's, it's back. back. I fixed it. <laughs> I feel like Dave is up yeah, there working on it. She probably fixed it. <laughs> oh, Dave fixed it. All right. I don't know. <laughs> All right, flashing now. Zeroing it. Hold up there. Oh, hold on. Oh, you're yeah. flashing? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I thought you were. All right, so one I is heard used. Suction. One is used. Uh, a sticky valve. Okay, we're going to go the other way. All right, guys, we're going to do seven. Yeah. Okay. I love seven. All right. Jake, go ahead. All right. Want to push on in there a bit, please, Dave? That worked. It's going up. Give her a little shake. Pull we'll wide there, please. Gonna run it out a little bit there, Jake, and run it back in. There it is. I think I saw it. Great. Zeroed now. viewer was asking, was that a sea pig? We think so. Okay. Yeah, I think that's the species Peniagene. Nice. Nice. I can tell by the picture that <laughs> Liz Miller provided to us <laughs> with the name next to it. <laughs> Interesting method. Yeah. <laughs> Standing on the shoulders of giants. <laughs> <laughs> so we kind of moved out of that sediment field into an area with a lot more pavement. And we are approaching the probably what's going to be a pretty steep slope up the yeah. side of the seamount here. We're approaching from a different direction than we did. Uh, on the last dive, that one was pretty much up the east side of the seamount, and this one is coming up the north side of the seamount. The chance that kind of prevailing currents will make concentrations of, of biology different on different sides of the seamount, so this would be a nice test. One of our viewers wants to know the animals that we are collecting and bringing to the surface, do they have any level of oxygen saturation? And is that the reason why they might survive, not survive coming to the surface? I think that one of the main reasons is the change in temperature. Temperature where we are right now is probably one and a half degrees C and 
at the sea surface it's you know, 27 I think the water is uh, so that makes it difficult for them to survive there is the change in pressure and their uh, there's definitely a change in oxygen concentration but I don't know that that's the, the main reason that they would have difficulty Rennie, what's our kind of motion status? Ship move is complete? Yeah, ship move just completed, so I'm going to call in another one and we'll we'll roll. Does that sound good? Yep. Bridge now. One more step, 100 meters, bearing 150. Thank you. I think we saw one coral when we when we landed. Haven't seen any around here, but also we haven't seen a lot of hard rock for them to attach to. For this dive, we are exploring a yet unnamed seamount, just being called Seamount G for now. The chain of seamounts that we are exploring on this expedition, only one of them actually has a name. You're seeing them for the first time along with us. Ooh, we can. Mm, Budweiser? I think so. Prominently displayed. See if anyone's living on it or yeah. their cans look the same all the time. <laughs> so we'll get the internet sleuths to figure out what year this is from. Uh -huh. Always amazed at how quickly they identify what year Pepsi it was or whatever. <laughs> right. There's, there's uh, your challenge viewers. Go ahead well, this and put one down in there, please. As a modern top can, it doesn't look like the pull tab. Yeah. Are we going to want to slurp this? There's a bar. <laughs> <laughs> Only in port. Only lately sedimented. Not a sponsor. Could be, though. <laughs> yeah. Could be. <laughs> <laughs> How fresh their cans still look under the ocean. <laughs> still covered in some sediment, so it's been there for a little bit. Side. It looks pretty recent. It does look recent. Yeah. yeah. So if we get the date of the can oh, look at and the sedimentation rate, yep. we can establish. <laughs> Mystery solved. <laughs> right. we'll have who, to need, take it. who needs rocks? Right. <laughs> a lot of really taking consideration, though, that it's a very convex surface, right? So mm -hmm. it's going to definitely affect the sedimentation rate, mm. one would have say. We'll need yeah. the flattest surface. Hmm. All right, that's enough of free advertising. <laughs> oh, <for that>. <laughs> <laughs> should we uh, should we pick it up and bring it back? Clean up the seafloor. Uh, usually we just leave the debris. Yeah, well, there, do you, the, you want to? The big boss back here says uh, pick big, it up. Big boss. That, that's not me. <laughs> just for clarity. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, the big boss says. <laughs> All right, Jake, you want to grab it? It's often how I, I refer to myself. Yeah, that's your new nickname. When uh, when I'm alone. Oh yeah. <laughs> Just ruminate over past <laughs> past grievances. Yeah. Uh, where do we want to stow this puppy? Uh, recycling bin <laughs> B. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh. I think one yeah, of the forward uh forward. I mean, it's super light, right? So we have a little bit of. Something in one of the forward boxes, we could put it in with that. I think there's a sea star in the forward right-hand side. We could put it in starboard, one of the starboard 
larger well, boxes? Actually, the uh, the one closest to the front has a rock in it that's pretty small. It would fit on top of that without any problem. Yeah. So starboard box E. A. A. A, the small one. Could always okay. crush it a little bit, too. Be very, <laughs> very gentle with this. On your forehead, you have to crush it yeah. on your forehead. <laughs> no. I wouldn't be gentle. I'd just crush it in your hands. I always wanted okay. to do that. Oh, yeah. just don't get it stuck in the coral cutters yet. Got to run away. Don't run away from me. Yeah, but we were just recently in the monument, and we would not have been able to do this. All right, just to confirm, science, there is no floaty bits in the starboard box there? Correct. Correct, yeah, All just right. one small rock in A. All right, you got it there, Jake. Yeah. No more free advertising for them. Nope. All right, popping out. So I can solve those now. So A is what we're going for? That's correct. Reg. Nice. The boss has joined the science party line. Would you like to introduce yourself? <laughs> yeah, I'll introduce her. <laughs> this is Allison Fundus. She's the chief operating yeah, officer of the Oaks Ocean Exploration Trust. Hails from Nashville, Tennessee. Um, she's a geologist by training. In fact, we worked together on an eruption of the East Pacific All Rise the way in 20. Yeah, idea. The eruption was in 20 Five, six. 2006, right? And uh, she's one of my best buds. Aww. <laughs> She makes us all call her Big Boss, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that's why I'm not introducing myself. <laughs> it's a test, I see. <laughs> the viewers appreciate us picking up ocean trash. Thank you, pilots. Yeah, just cleaning up the seafloor <laughs> once again at a time. We should do that. Big Boss. <laughs> we should get ahead a little bit. Yeah, I'm just going to close up this bin first. Roger. Mm, pending wall. Thanks, Rennie. Yep. All right, Jake, ready? Get going. So you guys think we can get like 10 cents? <laughs> <laughs> Depends on what state. That ought to recuperate the cost yeah. it took to collect. <laughs> One of our viewers wants to know if there are areas where you've seen more debris compared to this this region. I think uh, when we were in the Caribbean, we saw quite a bit, and it uh, definitely correlated with cruise ship tracks. Uh, oh, we we're seeing a lot of like solo cups and things. Oh, that's unfortunate. In the Channel Islands last year, there was so much fishing gear. Oh, that's right, yeah. <laughs> always, always a pain. <laughs> I remember that moment in time, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Out at the Mid Atlantic Ridge, I saw a toilet sitting Whoa. upright on the <laughs> Was there anyone living inside of said toilet? <laughs> nope. Oh. The, uh, but the unoccupied light was on at the time. So <laughs> <laughs> Just part of the marine plumbing we got going on out here. <laughs> One of my favorites was uh, there was a rice cooker offshore of uh, British Columbia. And oh, wow. we opened it up and there was an octopus inside. Oh. And uh, with a brooding octopus inside.